All right. Where was I now? Well, you did the last story. I did. So you should be te- very good, little math boy. Look at that private, expensive dine education. I've uh, I've got <laughs> I've got a lot smarter since you gave me COVID. <laughs> hey, hey, you watch your mouth. This is a family show. Yes, but only like the Adams family. <laughs> oh, I don't think we're that functional. <laughs> oh no, that's a given. I'm just saying they would be able to watch this show. Oh yeah, well that's true. They would because <laughs> Wednesday out Wednesday reminds me of my youngest granddaughter. Cute, kind of sweet, frightening as hell. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. if you're if you're at all like the Adams family or have been described to be like the Adams family, please make sure you like, subscribe, and follow this true really news. You might as well because there's obviously something wrong with you. Please talk to the rest of the Adamses and ask them to do the same if you would. S'il vous plaît. I didn't know you spoke Deutsch. I, I'm a long Belgian Deutsch speaker. Belgian. Go with Belgian because that's close to Frenchish. <laughs> the Belgiques. Ah, oh, just never mind. <laughs> you just used to go there just to buy chocolate. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Switzerland? No, Belgium. I like Belgian chocolate better than Swiss. Well, I tell you what. Get me some of both. <laughs> and I'll decide it for you. Well, now I know what to get you for Christmas. Anything. With chocolate. That'd be good. COVID laced with chocolate. He'd eat it. Oh, yeah. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I've been inoculated. I won't die. Mm-hmm. It says so on the cover. <laughs> Woo-hoo! This is True Really News with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true. Really? As far as you know. Where was I now? You were reading the news. Not yet. Now I am. Okay. 38 year old singer songwriting. Singer songwriting? <laughs> I knew a family named Wrighty, but I don't think this is it. 38 year old singer songwriter Brocarda. Do you know this person? You're a music kind of guy. Never heard of it. B R O C A R D E. It is a she. Bar She's 38. Sounds like a barcode. And, in his, and is in love with Eduardo. No, oh, lucky Eduardo. I know what you're asking. What's, how could this be on This Is For Really? It's a love story. Yeah. It is. Eduardo is a Victorian ghost who died at the age of 35 when he fell down a well, and Lassie was obviously not there yet to save him. <sighs> the Daily Star wasted ink on this story. <laughs> Ed, I think a wasted ink. It might have just wasted space on the interweb. Well, and, that, a lot of space. and photons, a lot of space. photons yeah. have been wasted. And you don't want to waste those because you never know when you're going to be attacked by Klingons and you run out of photon torpedoes. You're screwed. I've seen it on Star Trek. You know, the one with hands, Han Solo and Luke Skywalker and James Bond and the June Taylor dancers. <laughs> right now, there are some gigaphiles just having a stroke. Eduardo first came to her on a night when she was having difficulty sleeping. He made the whole room cold and then introduced himself to her and whispered, I love you in her ear. I love you in her ear. He proves himself by blowing out candles. Well, that's love right there. Oh, hang on. There's more. Oh, good. He leaves steam hearts on the shower walls, she said. Don't. But Brocarda, Brocarda, Brocardi. Hey, get on Google. I'm reading here. B R O C A R D E. B R O C A R D E. But she is also afraid of Eduardo. Well, and who wouldn't be? My biggest fear is that he'll expect too much from me and kill me. So I'm a spirit too. Well, I mean, that's understandable. I mean, we have, I mean, there's certain history here. Oh, come on. She's creepy and she's kooky, mysterious (laughs) and spooky. She's altogether kooky. This person who I've never heard of before. That's pretty close. Uh, I'd say Brocarde. Brocarde? That's what I'd say, but uh, because they aren't good pronouncers. I take it as just a European thing. Yeah, probably. Pop music? Goth. Opera? Goth rock singer. Okay. She's going to direct a new video. She should probably watch what she ingests. I'm just thinking. 
<laughs> After Brocarde revealed her ghostly paramour on ITV's This Morning, he said Eduardo was now Eduardo has now ghosted her. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> He won't return my spirit text. <laughs> I'm being ghosted by a ghost. That's got to be a new all-time stupid. Oh, Eduardo boy. seems furious with me since I've gone public with our romance. What romance? <laughs> he blows out candles, puts, draws little hearts on your steamy window thing, and what? Scares you half to death that he may kill you. I think she's Scares. cleared the market on the absent on, on the continent. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. She she's getting the old version. I haven't seen an update, but she had hoped to learn back on Halloween with scattered rose petals and candles because he likes blowing those out, I guess, you know, uh, what else are you going to do? I may even cook him some typical Victorian dishes to win him back. This woman is still loose in public, right? She's yeah, she is. I'm her mind need to get her some kind. So, help. Where is she? Brocarda with the, I'm guessing England, maybe. Uh, I can't tell you. Or Italy. She, she speaks English. Um, well, yeah, sadly. At least if she spoke in, like, you know, Italianish. Italianish. Or Francian. I mean, but no, she has to speak in English, so we have to read the story. Otherwise, we could have our, like, European counterparts in Albania read the story, and we wouldn't know anything about it. But no, you've got to speak English. Doggone it, woman. Let's see. Boasted Bocarde is music. Bocarde ghost. is fashion. Bocardi is a curious and vastly charismatic alliance of the two art forms. A woman of extremes in mystery who cannot be easily categorized. Oh, no, I think we can pretty easily categorize. Yeah, I've got a couple categories. They all involve a room. <laughs> but, if you, <laughs> but if you imagine the operatic voice and gothic hair of Kate Bush and with, what? with the and drama of metal, you get somewhere near. Okay, so she's not English. No. But she appears to be in Soho, London. Well, that explains a lot. Oh, my. This poor girl. Somebody get her some help. Please. Holy Pete. Okay. <laughs> this one I just love. Chinese food live streamer known only as Mr. Kang told Hunan TV that he's been banned from the Handati Seafood Barbecue Buffet in Changsha City after a series of binges, according to the BBC. His quote, I can eat a lot. Is that a fault? Adding that well, he, he didn't waste any of the food. Okay. Restaurant owner says Mr. Kang was causing the restaurant to lose money. Even when he drinks soy milk, he can drink 20 or 30 bottles. When he eats pork trotters, which are pork. <laughs> when he eats pork <laughs> trotters, he consumes a whole tray of them. And for prawns, usually people use tongs to pick them up. He uses a tray to take them all. <laughs> well, you know, this, this gives you an idea. He ate 1.5 kilograms of pork trotters. That's about two pounds. Sure it is. I can see that. That was during his first visit. Okay. But about 3.5 to 4 kilograms of prawns on another visit. That's close to eight pounds. Yeah. Mr. Kang said the restaurant is discriminatory against people who can eat a lot. And yes, they are. I, so I got curious. I thought, does this guy look like us? Does he? No, he's svelte. <laughs> it's, he actually what the hell? I'll bet Omar? He's, I bet he's buoyant or something, but he's young too. And boy, can he no. pack it away. <laughs> Eight pounds of prawns. That's like five pounds of dog ears. Well, I have a question. Yes. Why do I even talk to you? <laughs> uh, Ann pays you still. By the way, she, she's got COVID now, too, so it's your fault. Okay. Killing off the entire Combs family. <laughs> Apparently. Ian's one doing by one. Fine. Birthdays notwithstanding. I feel He does, though. He looks good for 45. Yeah, he's not 45, though. 50? 38. Repeat after me. Really? Wow. He looks rough. Yeah, I was going to say. Can I get that thing for his eyes and stuff? Glasses? Yeah, there you go. All right, idiot. Read a story. 
There's some irony in this, but mostly it's just fun. A Tennessee boy now has a whopper of a fish story. Last year, he reeled in a nearly 80-pound sturgeon. Ooh. According to Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, and I, I didn't know they had one, announced the catch on Facebook because that's where everything's announced these days. They said the fish caught by nine-year-old Koi Price at Old Hickory Lake near Nashville tipped the scales at 79.8 pounds. Wow, that's big. I'm thinking that's probably as big as your average nine-year-old, isn't it? Well, no, they're a little <laughs> Well, maybe your average nine-year-old. Yeah. Well, they're not. My don't build big nine-year-olds. Yeah. Or 17-year-olds. For that matter. Or 40-year-olds. I have noticed they're all kind of diminutive. They're, well, they're not diminutive. They're just small. <laughs> they look like garden gnomes with hockey sticks. That's all I'm saying. You realize, right, that they all know where you live. None of them has ever been here, to my knowledge. To well, they know. all have. Oh, they all have. Yeah. That grandpa is a really nice man. I remember once. Saying. <laughs> nice suck up. Yeah. Well, I, let okay. de- I let her detune all my guitars. Yes, you did. <laughs> Nine-year-old Koi Price, 79.8 pound sturgeon in a lake. I thought sturgeon were uh, saltwater fishies. Shows what I know. No, because we got sturgeon lake here in Minnesota. That's not, that is freshwater. That's not saltwater. Is it? Yes. It was a <laughs> it was a big day of fishing for the entire family as Koi's two sisters caught 58-pound catfish and a nearly 40-pound striper. I'm not sure, but I think if you put all those weights together, they may weigh more than all three kids. That's possible. The agency said that the lake sturgeons, such as the one caught by Koi, can grow up to eight feet long and up to 300 pounds during their 150-year lifespan. So he got one basically in... I don't know, adolescence. Still a puppy. I do find it interesting, though, that his first name is Koi. Fish. Got it. Thank you. It's it's easier to understand now if you've been watching TV at all in the turning into your parents commercials. (laughs) (laughs) Or if you remember one really old episode of the original Hawaii Five-0. Oh, Oh, good Lord, I don't. I know you don't. Oh, well. No one does. My name is McGarrett. James Bond. (laughs) You realize he was one of the few uh, top end law enforcement guys that we depict as actually working for his government as opposed to <laughs> most of them fighting against it. Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. is that? Scott, explain that to me. James Bond works for Her Majesty, yes. except in rare circumstances where Her Majesty's government is wrong, which is very rare. I think maybe in two movies, <laughs> Quite, maybe three. Well, history tells us. <laughs> But in the United States, every freaking cool spy we get is fighting against <laughs> against <laughs> his own government because well, they're, may- they're evil. Maybe this will help you. I doubt it. Edward Pemberton has loved flowers since taking a horticulture class in the seventh grade. He loved them so much he became a flower delivery man just to see the joy on people's faces when they received a big, beautiful bouquet from a loved one. That's so sweet. The only rub was delivering Uh-oh. flowers didn't pay very well to support to support Edward's drug habit. Well, that is a problem. So he turned to robbing banks. Well, but was... every time he robbed one, yeah. he would be sure to bring a nice oh, no. bouquet or a plant along with him. Oh, dude, you've been living in comic book land too long. The flowers show I'm polite, he said. It will come as no surprise. Edward has a rap sheet displaying 14, count them, 14 prior arrests. He believes he's a good person. And the brightly colored bouquets are a way of expressing gratitude. Turns out that people don't care about your lousy flowers when you potentially put their lives at risk. But except for that, dude, you're well, a hell of a nice guy. Yeah. The, uh, did they appreciate the gesture? No, they did not. Now, thanks to the criminal justice system's fingerprint technology, Edward's special relationship with flowers is ruined. Ruined! Damn you. I never want to see flowers again, he said. Ever? They're the thing that did me in. They're bad memories. Yeah, it took fingerprints right off the flowers and pots. Well, see, you got to remember to wipe down the stem. (laughs) Exactly. What a maroon. What a I don't know. I'm wondering. Could it be the fact that you're an idiot and have something to do with the trouble you're in? I think he's a real filbert. Is that like Dilbert? Yeah, I think so. Okay. This is True Really News.
Send email to TITR at netradio.network.